The following video was made possible in part by Oculus. Access to the applications and hardware presented have been supplied free of charge. No additional monetary compensation was provided. Hey folks, welcome to another VR video. Today we're checking out Avatar, uh, which is a program that allows telepresence and allows you in a headset to actually be in attendance at multiple different events. Uh, the event we're going to be walking through is a tour of parts of Stanford University, uh, which would be great if you're remote and you're interested in Stanford University as an example. But other examples, maybe you're taking a training class for a factory. You could play back that training that was recorded a long time ago and be part of that, be present there. Or you're at a conference, but you can't get to the conference because the pandemic has prevented you from doing so. It's got interactive streaming roaming sessions, so you can actually speak using the microphone to the presenter. Chat, mic, annotation, snapshots, or present. And then of course you can also edit your avatar. My avatar doesn't really look like me, but it's as close as I can get. I guess this one's pretty close too. So a bunch of different avatars, which I really like. You can kind of make it as unique or as presentable as... I'm going to go with this guy, actually. Uh, and these look like... I think it's 3D Wolf or Wolf 3D are the folks that make those avatars. I believe that's correct. We're going to go back to being this person. Either way, we're going to click on Present. That's our Stanford tour that we're going to now go into. Now, we are only using mic audio because that's really all I have, unfortunately. Yeah, so you'll see uh, that is the, the cafe, or the um, Arbuckle Cafe, our main dining hall. Doors are open. That's one of the beauties of going to school in Northern California, is the weather is like this most of the year. Um, so Arbuckle takes advantage of the outdoor space. Um, they, there's more seating outside Arbuckle than there is inside. And so meetings, um, lunches, uh, class projects often take place outside. Not only outside Arbuckle, but as you can see, there's a lot of outdoor seating here, and much of the the life of the school. No, I'm controlling this using the thumbstick. What's the big building behind you? The big building behind me is the Bass Center. Um, it's the library of the GSB. Uh, it's not the typical library in that it's not full of books. There are study rooms in there uh, for group projects or individual studying. Uh, as well as a couple computer labs for some of the more advanced analytic classes that need access to Bloomberg terminals or certain Excel um, software packages. And we're actually going to head in there in just a second. A couple other things I'd like to point out are that kind of surrounding us are the classrooms, as well as faculty and staff um, uh, offices to my left. Um, so let's head on this way. We'll head into Bass, and uh, feel free to uh, ask more questions as we go. What's your uh, favorite class at GSP? My favorite class? Um, so my favorite class was actually last quarter, um, and it was called Family Business. There's so as you can see, we're moving almost here. on like a robot um, with the like camera there. Um, but it's, it, the topics of the class are similar. It's pretty it's cool. How multi -generational you can see the camera pass on, the legacy of their business, on that um, little robot. Without having things like affluenza or spoiling um, future generations with wealth, um, as well as how do you navigate um, a family-owned business as big as Heineken or as big as FEMSA or these multinational massive companies like Walmart and Ford that are publicly traded but still managed by family offices or by families. So that was probably my favorite class so far here at school. Thanks, Sawyer. How big are the typical classes, Sawyer? An average class um, is hard to place down. I'm in a class now that has eight students in it. Um, now obviously I'm not able to control the movement of the robot. Uh, this is not a live recording, um, but even in demo form, you can see I'm actually in this library right now as part of this presentation. Wow, this building's amazing. Yeah, this is the Bath Center. This is the library. Um, it's four floors high, um, most of which is dedicated to study space um, and, uh, and meeting rooms. Um, there are also uh, a few computer labs, like I mentioned, and this is um, the place where most people study, especially if they don't live in the residences just across the street. Again, we've got that little robot. 
campus, or do most of them live in the residences? The first year, almost all the students live in the residences, and the second year, most of them are off campus. Um, Stanford has just opened up new graduate student housing, so some of students will be able, to, or more second years will be able to live in the residences in the second year. Currently, all first year MBAs are right across the street there in the two main residences. So that gives us an idea of how this demo would work. We're now back to the Avatar menu. If we go back into the demo here, chat can actually write a message. That would show up not just for the people that are presenting the tour, but also the other people that are on that tour, if there are others. You can click on mic, you can mute it, you can make it live, you can annotate the scene. Obviously, it's just flat. You're not able to pull forward or anything of that nature. But let's say you wanted to circle a specific spot. We're going to try all of this going through that same tour again in just a moment. Race everything first here. So you can see a little bit more of how interactive it can be. So we're going to go back through that presentation one more time. And this time, we're actually going to use some of those tools. Yeah, so you'll see uh, that is the, the cafe, or the um, Arbuckle Cafe, our main dining hall. Doors are open. That's one of the beauties of going to school in Northern California, is the weather is like this. So if we wanted to chat, um, so we could just say hi. The outdoor space. Um, it they, says hi there, we can have a little smiley face. Than there is inside. And so if we maybe, wanted to annotate, uh, lunches, we could pick uh, the red class, here, and we could say, and hey, check out that thing uh, over there. Arbuckle, but as you can see, there's a lot of outdoor seating here, and much of the life of the school happens outside. What's the big building behind you? We wanted to take a snapshot. We could take a snapshot the big building behind me in the Portrait Center. Square um, Landscape the or 360. Uh, it's not the typical library. And I just took a snapshot. We can pull that up. In there, uh, for group projects or individual studying, uh, as well as and now you can see this is the snapshot that I just took in the app. So especially if you're using this as a tour or as an educational demo, this is a very powerful tool. So this is intended, of course, for business use. Uh, it is not just a Quest-specific program. You can get multiple sessions. You can log in as a regular user. But Avatar is something that you can put on a Quest 2 or a Quest device, load up through App Lab, and actually be part of experiences like I said, multiple different ways. I, I, I was impressed by the functionality and impressed by the different ways that you can interact with people. And I just wanted to share it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I will be back with more content soon. Until next time, get out there and enjoy some VR for yourself. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye now.